Imagine the world in 50 years time. The year is 2072. Some young people are doing a history project and find an old video made by a group called Mixed Up. It is about a virtual museum. Perfect. There are two rooms in the museum. The first one is titled Me, Unlimited. It is filled with things that young people in Mixed Up are inspired by, things that they love. There are things that they have created, things that nourish them and things that make a difference to their own and other people's lives. The second room is called Dark Pasts. The young people have put things in here that they thought should be history in the future. These are things that the young people of 2072 might have heard about but have never had to deal with themselves. They want to share this video with others. Welcome to the Mixed Up Museum. It's the plaque of Isaac Newton, who discovered gravity after he sat under a tree and an apple fell on him. So then he made the gravity fury. My name is Samuel Reese and I am 14 years old. I like learning about space and history. I would want to put space in the mix of museum. Space is one of the things that we need to learn about because when people are trying to get trips to Mars and that, Elon Musk, the person who originally thought about the idea, should be able to do it by 2024. We're the only planets we know of that has life and oxygen. I like to learn about it to see if we will ever find another planet with spit oxygen on it. There's a fury called the Dark Matter Fury, which is uh, supposed to be a hidden particle that will expand space, and then one day it will eventually die and cause a new Big Bang. The Big Bang Fury it was a fury where the, how the universe was created. A bunch of particles came together causing a massive band that caused the first ever star to be born. And if the three theories are true, then we don't actually know how many big bands have happened before ours. I really think we know in space is called the Observable Universe and it stretches for light years and we still haven't discovered anything, so I don't think there's anything out there except us. But in the future, we might be able to travel light years and not just miles and kilometers. The object that's uh, most important to me right now is technology. <laughs> it's normally be my laptop or something, but right now it's my phone. The one thing that probably will go into the dark past will probably be the, like something to do with COVID because throughout history there's been hundreds of viruses that have nearly killed everyone in the world and COVID's the latest virus to try and do that. Knew that they will be enjoyed by people so far into the future. My name is Nicole Jones. I'm 21 years old and I'm a student at Swansea University. I have five cats and I'm interested in both sociology, history and politics. I like taking care of my skin and doing makeup. And I like going floating down at the Lazy Frog. I like to put in the mixed up museum the concept of hope because I feel it is important as it helps people get through tough times. 
I've written a poem about hope that I'd like to present to you all today. What would I say the most powerful thing in the world is? Is it an earthquake, a storm, or even the very rocks underneath our feet? Or is it something much harder to sense, but yet is always surrounding us? I think the most powerful thing in this world is the hope that lives within our hearts and the strength it gives to us when we need it the most. Hope is something which is timeless. It was born long before anything which is surrounding us. And one day when everything we know is gone to dust, hope will still be there. It has the power to keep people going through the most horrible of times and allows them to create great future for themselves all within their own heads. It allows people to come together in hopes of building a better tomorrow. Sometimes in our darkest hours it can be hidden from our views, but it's always there with the promise of a happy ending. Sometimes it can take years for it to come to fruition, but one day the darkness will ease up and life will feel easier. If you're surrounded by darkness and it's all you can see, just remember that the world operates in weird ways. For every down in this world there is an up somewhere. The sun which has set will surely rise again. I'll probably put in the museum a recording of the Covid broadcast they used to do in 2020. So I feel this was a very important and historical time that young people my age went through. I put drug dealers into the dark past room. They know that these products can cause horrible health effects, but also they can cause addiction. And many drug dealers, when they know a client is addicted, they will take advantage of this and keep pushing up the prices because they know that the individual will buy the products. And they don't care if this person has their life through and by addiction or by the health effects from the products they're giving them. All they care about is money and having like the cars, the clothes to flex around with. They don't care about people. They only care about themselves and money. So hopefully in 50 years time, these people will all be gone and there will be none of this anymore. My name is Tom, I live in the UK, I'm 14 years old, I like gaming and Fortnite, I like cars, my dream car is a Bugatti. I am a YouTuber, my videos are mostly about my dog Hugo, the most views I've had so far was of my dog walking, it had 7.8 thousand views, he likes to take because he thinks it's up in underground and he thinks it's food down there. This is why I want to put being a YouTuber into the Mix Up Museum. Subscribe to Thomas Ed Price on YouTube. My hobbies include going for walks, going to restaurants and musical theatre and that's what I like to put in the Mixed Up Museum. The reason why I want to put musical theatre into the Mixed Up Museum is that I've always enjoyed singing since I was little and musical theatre is my favourite genre of music 
and I also really enjoyed going to see live shows. One of the great things about musical theatre is that it takes you on a wide journey of emotions. One minute you could be feel really happy, the next minute really angry, the next minute you're really sad and then you think, oh actually I can relate to this song. And I enjoy being able to feel the different emotions when I see different shows. One of my primary school teachers was a drama fanatic and she really inspired me to do musical theatre. Mrs Griffiths has been a really inspiring person to me. The reason why Six is my favourite musical is because it's about the six wives of Henry VIII and I'm also really interested in history and it brings two things that I really enjoy together and each of the performers has a different song to sing in a different genre and all the costumes and lighting is really exciting. It's not just me who loves going to see these shows. The shows that I've been able to see have been running for decades and they've always had the full house, which is amazing. I hope the shows that I've been able to see are still running in 50 years' time. I would put my tea mug in the Mixed Up Museum because I have a cup of tea every day without fail. I would like to put bullying in the dark past because I've been bullied in junior school and I don't think it's very fair because I have a disability, it doesn't mean that I should be treated any differently. And the things like your intestines, the actual bacteria in your intestines, will start eating you once you die because there's no longer any food coming in so they'll just start eating you wow. as you rot but that doesn't happen in mummies because the intestines have been removed so, so the body is more preserved and the sand as well I think also helps in preserving them I'm William Dale and I'm 19 years old I'd often always had problems with spelling because English is inherently illogical in its spelling. There's no, it's a lot like Mandarin, because if you look at Chinese writing, they're not verbal. The writing isn't verbal. It's just symbols. If I, realized, if I wanted to write a lot more, I couldn't do it efficiently, relying on uh, English spelling, because uh, I have to actually keep going skimming through a dictionary to find the spelling, and that was a massive bottleneck in the efficiency. So I realised I needed to develop a shorthand, and I started to identify sounds didn't have letters for them, or didn't have efficient letters for them. I started writing phonetically, and one of my first proposals was, cut the letter C. But the thing is, the letter C is an Etruscan invention, because what happened is, the, the Romans learned to write off the Etruscans, who learned to write off the Greeks. And the Greeks used the letter K only, they have no C. But the Etruscans removed K and added a C, and they also removed gamma, the Greek G, which is why the Latin G is basically just C with a, a, a modification. And I also introduced a new letter, I, I introduced at long point, which is uh, this kind of line with three other lines going through it, like a triple T. And uh, that was to represent the sound which was the and th. Uh, obviously, the and th were represented in runes and are still represented in Icelandic writing, but aren't represented in modern English because the Romans had no th and th. Although ancient, the original monks who wrote down English did devise a letter which I'm now using in more modern versions of my writing system. There's a word here, which, double here, this little thing at the end, if you can see it. That means cha. But then I encountered something called the International Phonetic Alphabet, and I saw it transcribed into English typing for the reform spelling. Obviously, when the Normans con conquered, that meant a lot of new spelling conventions from French were introduced which meant that you had entirely two essentially parallel spelling mechanisms existing alongside each other. But then with the French, they introduced a whole other set of those ideas. Even though they were only written with 26 letters, had no consistency in how those 26 letters were used. There are a lot of Greek letters, which I did eventually incorporate into my own way of writing. There are endless Greek letters. I ended up trying to get, trying to create a whole new alphabet system, a whole new what's called a featural system a lot like Korean, and I tried writing English that way without any resemblance to Latin, but now not only was it kind of a dead end, and I realised that was just silly and unproductive and I wouldn't really understand it. It was just a strange way of... 
I'm not entirely sure why I did it that way, and I'm also not entirely, that's probably a lack of understanding of the IPA, I, I believe. And this Greek letter here, meaning KH. And here is one of my standardized, first early standardizations of what my new alphabet would look like. A lot of things have changed since the original, including the inclusion of this thing. Because this, and this here is another one of the Greek letters, theta, meaning th. Because th and th are separate, like s and z are separate. English spelling reform, spelling things how they sound, has been a dream of mine for as long as I can remember. This is the official kind of standard I set right at the end. And this was set sometime around early 2019, around that time period. So several months after I first started it. And all these letters are typable, at least in theory, into a computer. So I've essentially achieved my objective, which was I had since a child, which was making English pronounced how it sounds. And I've done that in the most technical way I could. towards the future, you lock towards the past and all that we have achieved in the past. Okay, think of this way. We achieved touch screens, green phones, after the DS, after the Nintendo DS was launched. Like this then was once was once on a different thing. And we made it a phone, a way to connect to the internet, which was actually already on the DS, by the way, but much bigger. We could connect to people, we could download things on it. A lot of things, really. Well, my name is Daniel John Reese, and I am 18 years of age. I actually love swimming, I'm quite a swimmer. I like my friends, because they're friends of mine, obviously. I am, um, I love my family, family, especially my little sister. I, um, I also like to watch a lot of anime, be it quite the average week. I would wish to put something about anime history or something about anime in the museum. Being that I have recently researched some topics on this myself, there have been a few of things I have recently uncovered. Do you know that popular movie Astro Boy? Do you know that that was actually an anime at one point, long before that movie was even released? There was um, an anime called um, Astro Boy released, released in Japan. And then when it was again released over here, it got some colour added to it and that. I also do know that Japanese animation has actually, has actually did, probably did take the leap to, um, to coloured animation. You know, coloured screens and not just black and white everywhere. Because I have quite a few favourites all contending for top spot. Jujutsu Kaisen is one. I don't really recommend it for audiences below the ages of 12. It will probably look a lot more better than what it is currently today, but some plots will become stale because as obviously with um, story writing goes, you cannot just take a story from one thing and completely rewrite it. However, you can in fact, however in the future there will be so little new things to write about that some plots from old anime will be, have to be reused. You can see that in a lot of anime nowadays too. Unfortunately, what I am actually hoping is gone in the future is the entirety, no, the entire notion of what a capitalism society is. I'm not going to fully explain what's wrong with it, but all I say is that all I would say is that the current situations with inequality in the multiple countries, in fact, which are capitalist are because capitalism in itself stops the growth of um, stops the growth of what equality is. Um, I've been riding for seven years. Um, I like 
volleyball and cricket, which I started quite recently, but I've become quite good at them, which is very good. Um, I like art and drama, and art, drama, and music, and I love my dog Lambs. Three and a half. I know, I forgot how old you are. Uh, he's a black Labrador and crossed with a proper spaniel. And he's a very happy dog. I would put satisfaction because um, it's a very important thing to me to be able to express myself and be accepted for just the way I am. Whether that's being accepted, like being teachers being okay with my tracks, being really busy or loud in their lessons, or just something as small as my friends being okay with my constant messaging them. I like to play smoke on the water and do I want to know by <laughs> Arctic monkeys. <laughs> Arctic monkeys. Do you want a chicken? You can have a chicken for me. I only got diagnosed with autism when I was 11, so it's two years ago. And it was kind of, I, I felt like I'd lived for a really long time acting like a different person. So being able to express myself is very important so then I don't feel like I'm acting all the time. So I'd like to put getting bullied for being different in the dark past room so I've been bullied because of my name um, just the fact that it takes me a bit longer to work things out um, because of the facial expressions my tics make me do Dinosaur. Um, the things that I say without needing to say, uh, without meaning to, and uh, just other really stupid things. Yeah. That's gone. <laughs>
because my mom just put me in a safety and my mom looked it up on her MacBook. Uh, when I, I called my information information because my mom, because it was like all information, it's kind of like an application my mom put me in. She thinks I, I, can, I can try to do some modeling. Well, also, I do a work experience in Oyster nice Mouth, which is my, my old school since 2003. Because that's where Sally and Miss Draper have a nursery. So I was helping them how to play, do like making out flowers and doing kind of stuff. Adam Phillips, I'm almost 17, and the thing I would like to put in the Mixed Museum is performing arts. The reason why I would like to put it in the museum is because I love to do it, to do performing arts, and I've loved to do it since a young age, and it just makes me feel like, it makes me feel alive, and I just love to do it so much, and I feel at home doing it as well. Performing arts is where you can express yourself through dance, singing and acting and you can do it in many different ways. I, I do it at Cosine and College, I do the level two and it's amazing. And in college I'm studying performing arts full time, four days a week. All oh, the college tutors are lovely, like Sam. My acting teacher, she's just so funny, she makes us laugh every day. My singing teacher, she's lovely. She also gives us the confidence to sing in front of other people. Our dancing teachers, they are so hilarious. They're the ones I can have a laugh with. My average day, well it all depends on the day really. On a Monday I have jazz, first thing which can be dreadful at times but you know I always love to do jazz. Music is my main passion out of all the rest because it makes me feel like really happy and I can just relax. It, it makes me calm when I get mad. It gets me motivated for when the subjects I really don't want to do and my main Few singers I, I like to listen to is Jennifer Hudson, Sam Smith, Jess Glynn, and Adele. My hopes for the future after I leave college is to end up on the West End or Broadway, and I want to be the main role in Hairspray, which is Lincoln Larton, and he, he, he's got quite a lot of dancing, which I have learned in college. He's also got a great voice, which I think I've got a great voice myself. And then in Greece, I want to play the host, because he's like a funky character to play. And I, I also want to make other people happy, but most of all, I want to make myself happy. I would put in the dark past in my journey to where I am now, because in comp, I didn't get the, the equality to do performing arts. Instead, they give me hairdressing and construction, but I was so angry, so I called my dad, and he said, well, I can't exactly tell you what he said, but so, I, so he just said, go for it. So I went to my head, and then he said, yeah, I'll give you a two-week trial to see if you can do it, for some reason. And then I proved him wrong, and now I am enjoying what I do in college. I'm Evelyn, I'm currently 24, I'll be 25 this July coming. I've got two Cocker Spaniels who are my absolutely are my babies. I have an older sister and I've got two identical older twin brothers. So they're called Philida, George and Harry. 
Um, and I've got two older big brothers who are my stepfather's two older sons, uh, who are called Stephen and Justin. I'm pretty much the youngest. I also live in the Upland. I would put in the museum my collection of books and films and probably a lot of the Netflix stuff that I tend to watch. Well, mo most of my favourite genre is probably um, paranormal, probably like a lot of like sort of stranded stories, like desert islands or stuff. And then I also probably like a lot of school ones as well. And there's like, there's a load of classics as well. And there's like a lot of Shakespearean stuff as well that I like to tend to read. Um, but then there's also books like Gone with the Wind as well. But it's just such a fantastic book. But at the moment, I'm currently reading this book called Maybe For You by this author called Jojo Moyes. And it's, it's sad and it's tragic, but it's an excellent book. It's a good film as well, but it's the same sort of plot. But unfortunately, the ending is quite a tragic ending, but it's, a, it's an excellent, excellent film. Well, there's a film which I still haven't seen, which is still currently on Netflix. There's a film called Messiah Gone. I still haven't seen it on stage yet. I'd love to see that. And I also like the film of Hamilton. You know, I've never seen it on stage. I'd quite like to see that. And then there's the musical of Anastasia, because there's a book called The Secret Countess which is very similar to the actual story of Anastasia, but it's more made up, it's more of a small, smaller, uh, rich, not rich family. Obviously, I think it has a bit of the same sort of plot, sort of beginning and ending. But obviously, she goes to work for a family as a servant because obviously they don't have any more jewels themselves. But there's also another good film called The Last Tsar, which is more honest and it's more truthful. But it's also interviews within and without of the Russian royal family. But it's an excellent film, but it's very, very sad, very, very tragic, but it's an excellent film. But then there's also a new film. You know, there's been many, many Elvis Presley films that have been made over the years. There's one that stars um, Austin Butler and Tom Hanks. I don't think it's come out yet. I think it will be coming out, or maybe it's already out. But I've se I've only seen the trailer. Um, but it looks it looks highly excellent because it's a film. I think one based on the King called The Searcher on Netflix. I still haven't seen that one yet either. Um, and there's a load of other ones I still haven't seen. So I do like quite a lot of musical other films as well. And then I. Probably also, I probably also quite like a few of the Michael McPurga books. There's one called Born to Run. There's one called War Horse. There's one called Shadow. Uh, there's one called The Butterfly Lion. So those are my few favourites by him. And then there's a book series called The Borrowers. That was an excellent book series. I've, I've been very surprised if anyone's ever read that one. And then there's also another good film called The Legend of Hercules, which I say is another, another excellent film. Because I think it's also very probably similar to films such as Shakespeare in Love. I've got the DVD of that, but I still haven't watched that yet. But I've seen the, the 1956 film called Troy. I've seen that, that was excellent. But there's other classics that I do enjoy as well, so. I probably, I did enjoy the film, I, I do say that, you know, and I, again, I'm not trying to offend the director, I really am not, because he did such, a, he or she did such a good job, but the, but the book itself, it's more honest, it's more gripping, it goes more into depth, um, and it's more explainable, it's more truthful. It's got, it's still got way, way too many chapters. Again, I'm not trying to find the author here, I'm really not. But it's, it's probably much better, more truthful and honest than the film, and probably more depthly accurate as well. So, I would probably just say books, because honestly, I've, I've had a lot of books now for so many years. I guess I do enjoy like watching and seeing stuff, but you know I do think books are probably the object I'd probably put into the museum. But I'd probably say the books are just Twelfth Nights, Romeo and Juliet, The Midsummer's Night's Dream. That was a good book. But again, you know, it's a bit like Jane Austen. Jane Austen was a, such a heroine, but it's unfortunate. I think there was a book that she didn't manage to finish. But people have said it's supposed to be a good book. I've read all the other books, but I think the ones I really, really hated, um, and again, I'm not trying to offend the Bronte sisters by saying that I really wouldn't want to do that because they were probably good authors themselves. But I think the book that I hated that they did was probably both Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre. I hated those. They were just so miserable, dark, dirty, just so, ugh, just so heart-rendingly stupid. 
I would like to put in the dark past room Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights by the Bronte sisters. My name is Megan. I am 20 years old. I like acting, singing, walking, exercising, and dancing. I meet my friends, thinking, talking, and bingo. I like those two. Ponty dancing. I like to dance. I'm very happy. I like dancing all my life. Dancing is amazing. Pasha Richards, passing IQ. I'm 19 years old. I live in Swansea. I attend to I attend at a school Pellegrin, and I'm in a school with young adults. And I'm the head girl representing Pupil Voice. I would put in Macaton because I feel like Macaton would make the people in the room more in inclusive and able to express how they feel and putting their heart and soul into it. And Macaton will always build up your self-esteem and your confidence. And I feel like this would mean so much to everyone, 
like people with um, disabilities can find it really frustrating and finding it really hard not to finding it really hard to communicate. But using Marketong would help that and relieve all the pain and misery in them and relieve all the frustrations and pain and be able to help them and you know fully grow with it and use it as I guess something special part of them really. My favourite signs is happy. That means make people happy. Make people happy. My also favourite sign has to be um, excited because I'm excited to be part of this project. And my 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 last sign that I like is um, love because I like love and make people feel loved and joy. I think marketer could be useful and for parents as well, like parents with kids with disability could learn it because parents could you know, also communicate with, with the children and also I, I got some experience because I got kids in my school who are deaf who use you know, marketer and but just sign language too and this would definitely um, it would be like it's into like um, a song saying this is me and it is me and it's about what I want to share with the entire world I want everyone to know about it and I would shout in, in rooftops if I had to and I, if I had to choose a TV I could put in the mix up museum it would be the my favourite all time favourite show H2O Just Add Water is Australian teen drama fantasy programme. It revolves around three teenage girls, Emma, Ricky and Cleo. They, they, they were teenagers and at was with an added twist. They are mermaids with supernatural powers that no one has ever heard of. And might not be anything in the dark or past. Because life is precious. I feel like life is what it makes it's so real. Like we have all this to be thankful of. Like a house, everything is perfect. I would never change it at all. The young people of 2072 are amazed by the video they've seen. They talk about the things that have changed since then and the things that haven't. Most of all, they think that the young people from Mixed Up are amazing, that they really are unlimited and hope that they can be like them too. What would you put in the Mixed Up Museum?